Hey everyone, in the video today, I've been challenged by a viewer of the channel, Ronald. He wants to see what we can do away from the big epic landscape and getting into something more relatable like botanic gardens or the local park. So we're doing just that. We've got a time limit and I'm dragging around old Milo boy here. So here we are at the local park. Now, if you're out walking the dog or just having a leisurely stroll, you probably just bring the camera with one lens. Today I am going to bring the whole arsenal, so a wide, mid-range and the telephoto, just because I don't want to be limited in any way by what we may see. Um, but yeah, realistically you might just want to bring one lens and there's a good challenge in that as well, potentially something we can do on another video. So we're going to go for a little walk with Milo, see what speaks to us. It's early morning, so the light is soft and it's quite overcast. So really the odds are somewhat against us in the sense that we've got no light at all but that's all part of it, right? That's the reality of being a landscape photographer. You just get what you're given and try to make the most of it. Let's go. And just to make it a little bit more realistic, we're gonna give ourselves a 20 minute time limit. We're right on 8.30, so we've got 20 minutes to do the walk with the dog and see if we can walk away with a few images which are hopefully <laughs> not too bad, let's put it that way. They're not gonna be great, but let's try and not get bad photos. These big beautiful gum trees reminds me of uh, back home in Australia, just the smell of them. But what I love is the, the bark, all the texture in that bark, very soft diffused light on those too. That's the beauty of the telephoto lens is that it really allows us to just simplify the scene, zone in on what's good and eliminate all the bad stuff. So we're gonna chuck on the 100 to 400 mil. Just get a nice detailed shot here of all that beautiful bark coming down. Might as well get comfortable, Milo, what do you reckon? So zoning in on the trees here, composition, it's always for me about keeping the eye back in that centralised part of the frame and not throwing the viewer's attention off to the corners. So as I look up at the trees there, I'm trying to balance out the scene with some dominant big parts of the trunks on the left and right. And then in the middle, there's actually a curved branch which is flowing out and back inwards. So I'm trying to use that as a way to bring the eye back into the center of the frame. And at the moment I'm on ISO 200. I've actually gone F16 because there's a lot of depth there because I'm quite close to this subject. And it's only one tenth of a second, but with the stabilization and particularly sitting down, that is more than fine to be handheld. That's at 100 mil. I'm gonna try a few more at different focal lengths and we'll see what we can do here. But I love the pop of green. That's a really good contrast, that cool green popping off the warm bark. It's all about just being an observer. Just take your time, just really see what catches your eye. Essentially, that's what photography is about. Milo is getting comfortable. However, we're probably just blown that's pretty scary. Nine minutes already. We've got about 11 minutes to go, so we better keep moving. Let's see what else we can get. All right, so over here is an absolute symphony of junk really there's these bulrushes big gnarled trees it actually really is not that appealing to the eye but what is important is the combination of color and texture and that is going to work really well as an icm intentional camera movement so what i'm going to do is slow down the shutter i'm at one six of a second and i'm just going to zoom in and then as i start to pan up i take the shot so i'm going to pan up like that and then we just get everything streaked out, but because of that variety of tones and colors, there's still something there for the eye to latch onto, but it just looks a lot nicer because it's been smoothed out with the ICM. Something you can try almost anywhere, anytime. Put the uh, wide angle on big beautiful tree here 
arching all the way out, that's perfect wide angle scene. There's lots of leaves on the ground. At the moment, I'm just staying up high and not really worrying about foreground matter. And it's just a nice, really simple scene. The wide angle at 12 mil is just getting in. It's creating a very nice arched type perspective with the tree, all the, all the symmetry coming out. If we get down low, we might be able to find a few leaves that we can get in the front as well, just to create the depth. can get all these colours in down the bottom there. All right, time is against us, so I might keep walking. Let's see what else we can find. All right, mate. Now, don't be afraid to uh, do a bit of strategic <laughs> placement if the uh, location calls for it. So in this case, it looked good down there, but I think up here, just that little pop of colour. And uh, come on guys, let's face it, I'm, the, I'm not the first person to do this, right? But it does look pretty cool if you have the right subject matter there. Milo came into my life in 2011, and that's when I first picked up a camera. So he's been with me in this whole journey. He even come over from Australia, didn't you, mate? So. He's had a lot of adventures with me over the years, old Milo. So some big long trunks over here and the branches are beautiful as well. I think this could make for a good ICM. So we'll do another intentional camera movement on there, streak those trunks out, and then we might just get some tighter shots of all the, the beautiful leaves and branches coming off. Looks good. What do you reckon, Milo? I don't want to be uh, streaking too fast because we lose the texture in the bark. So it's just trying to get that right, right movement. Something like that, potentially. You get the idea. I think we should now do it sharp, not do the, um, the movement. So zoning in, just getting similar to what we did at the start. We've got the nice contrast of the warm bark with the, the greens behind. I like three as well. The odd number there just keeps the eye floating through the scene. It's gonna be real nice here in the next month when all the leaves start to change. All right, we've got about two minutes left. Let's quickly run down to the small lake down here and we'll see what we can find with the water. I don't know if uh, it's been much of a walk for Milo. Look at him. <laughs> hey, not much exercise for you, mate. Just how he likes it. Let's go. Reflection City could definitely go for the, the obvious wide angle approach, but still got the telly on. Maybe a few tighter ones where I've got the flax in the background there with the, the reflections. Wow, that actually looks pretty cool. Wow, this, uh, this looks phenomenal through the, the long lens, like a watercolor, the reflections there with the various green tones and the different shapes with the trees and the flax. I actually, <laughs> Really liking this image, to be honest. It's kind of cheating when you have a reflection, isn't it? It just really simplifies everything and you get that instant symmetry, so it's gonna be pleasing on the eye regardless, but that, that's, that's a really nice little scene. All right, just gonna chuck the wide angle on. Let's get these reflections with the sky. Get the big classic scene. Definitely works, but I'm certainly a sucker for that telephoto perspective that we got, that's for sure. Let's go get that flax in the foreground. All this open water, it's a very simplistic scene. If we get the flax, it's just gonna give us that depth, a bit more of a three-dimensional type look. Well, I dare say, yep, we're out of time and we've gone over time. Hopefully you don't penalise me for that. Hopefully you enjoyed watching. I know I was actually pleasantly surprised with that reflection shot and some of the textures on the bark. It just goes to show that, you know, photography and the joy that you can get from photography can be done anywhere, even in your own backyard. And it can be done anytime, regardless of what the sky is doing. It's about that creativity and you're not gonna create a nice image if you're not actually getting out with the camera. So I really recommend that you get out as much as possible. Just take it along with you. If you're going out with your family, taking the dog for a walk, whatever it may be, 
and you honestly, I know for me, so over the years I've been surprised countless times by nature. Those fleeting moments always pop up when you least expect it. Alright guys, thank you so much for checking out the video. As always, if you have any questions, comments or even suggestions, leave them below and I'll get back to you. Alright, thank you. I'll see you in the next video.